Welcome to the Financial Freedom Podcast with your host, Lorna Poole, sharing the secrets to creating wealth, investing, and that all-important money mindset. To find out more and accelerate your journey to financial freedom, head on over to www.lornapool.com to get started. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Financial Freedom Podcast. Well, my guest expert today is going to chat to you about changing your financial operations system. Now, Lisa Duke is a self-made millionaire. She says it's boring. And by the way, boring is the best way to invest. And she invested through passive index funds, EFTs. And I, I'm, I'm delighted to have Lisa here because I think it's nice, and Lisa was sharing this as well, for people to hear her story because it just lets you know that it's possible. So Lisa Duke was raised in Arkansas. She spent the majority of her career in information technology in Atlanta, built a successful consulting firm with her husband of 20 years, Darren Duke. As we said earlier, they're self-made millionaires and currently live in the coastal of South Florida. Lisa is an accelerated licensed counselor and is becoming a financial fitness coach she has graduated from the financial coach academy and mindful millionaire she developed her intuitive gifts and spiritual connection through the, the through um what is that tifa healing theta healing yeah theta yeah. healing which you'll explain in a minute and she used um she used it to uncover and remove replacing limiting beliefs because let's let's be clear nothing holds us back more than our <laughs> beliefs right lisa yeah, yeah. It's one of those whole, uh, I've seen the enemy and he is myself kind of deals. <laughs> well, I'm going to talk about two things here. I'm going to talk about the EFTs a little bit, and then we can talk about our limiting beliefs. Is that all right, Lisa? Sure, go right ahead. So I'm investing in EFTs, and I've been trained that boring is best. So I would love to hear a little bit of your story of how you went about it. Like, you know, how, you know did you put money away every month? Um, how did you become self-made? I think the way we, I thought it was going to happen and probably both of us is we, we have, my husband and I have an IT consulting business and I kind of thought, right, we would go all in, we would spend every penny that we made, but then there'd be this pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. We would sell our business and we would get a big windfall and that would be the money we needed to be able to retire. And that's not completely, you know, made up. This is what we hear about in the media. These IT Lisa, consulting I think so many people think that's the right way to do it. And yeah. I was victim of that. And now I see that's not the way to do it. Like exactly. Because building you your really network have and any... focusing on your network works. Exactly. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have any control over whether or not somebody wants to buy your business. And to be realistic, most small businesses, it's sort of a cult of personality. So it's not really sellable anyway, because you are the business and it's so deeply tied with you that if somebody mm -hmm. were to buy it, it, it wouldn't be that, that valuable to them. They would follow the person instead of the business. So what we ended up doing, and this is only because we worked with a mentor and I kind of went along somewhat reluctantly. I thought, well, I'm going to get this big payoff when we sell the business, but I'll just put money in my retirement account kind of to humor <laughs> the person we were working with. And we just invested it, you know, in a very boring way. Every month we would put money in and then there wasn't anything exciting about it. But it, it's this compound effect of it's like, it feels like nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. And then 10, 20 years later, you wake up, you're like, oh, we're rich. Yay. When did that happen? Yeah. And that's what people don't realize. Like, you know, I fell victim to, you know, if I had spent the amount of money I put into growing a business into my financial freedom, you know, investing it and thinking about assets and my net worth and all that, I would be in a far <laughs> different place than I am now. <laughs> and I wish someone had, you know, shared this with me earlier. And it was such an awakening to know how precious that is. So that's why I'm so delighted to have you here because um, I think so many people don't know this. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And now is a great time 
to get started. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I'm guessing we're on a little bit of a down and it will probably pick back up as we work through this coronavirus situation. And, you know, all the statistics say that, you know, A, you can't time the market, but B, investing in a down market, obviously you get more shares for your dollar. So now is a great time to start. And we had a real turning point during the last recession when our business was still kind of chugging along, but we'd had to lay off everybody except ourselves. And we were having trouble making ends meet. And we had this choice point where we had to decide between lifestyle, keeping the house and the pickup truck and the SUV, or moving across town to kind of the unfashionable side of town, which got us closer to my husband's work. He then was able to bike to work. So we got rid of one car. We actually got rid of both cars, went down to a used Honda and because of that, we were able to continue that monthly contribution to the retirement fund. This was, you know, a couple of years ago. And as the market took off, that just continued to compound and to grow and the price of it to rise. And I, I don't think you have to make that kind of a choice to get financial freedom, but it's the most unusual choice that we made. And it really shows how, you know, early on, a lot of times you have a choice between lifestyle and building your financial future. And if you're willing to sacrifice, then the rewards are just exponential. Yeah. And can I get a rough idea of, you know, there's, they say there's three components, the rate, the amount and the time. How how much time were you investing in a mark, for example, roughly? Mm, well, I will say we started early in our careers. So in our early 20s, we were contributing to retirement, but we were not very, cons- we were consistent while we were employed, but then we would change jobs. You know, there might be a month yeah. or two break in between. So we were not really consistent. It was not something we were focused on. And then when we started the IT consulting business, we rolled everything over to a financial advisor we were working with, and we actually took loans out against our retirement accounts, which I do not recommend. (laughs) This was like, you know, this is, and this is proof. You can make mistake after mistake after mistake, and then once you get on the right track, you can recover from it. But we actually took money out around 2005, 2006. We did pay it back, but it was really probably... I would say between 2006 and, oh, let's see, 2018, so about 10, 12 years was really when we got, and it it wasn't early on, and so it was probably about a 10-year period, I would say from 2008 to 2018, where we just got really serious, we put in the maximum amount we could pre-tax, we were super consistent, we prioritized that above everything else. And that really, t- and we also, of course, as part of that journey, we paid off our debt. So instead of paying compound interest, we were earning compound interest. And that really is what turned the corner. When you start to focus on net worth above toys and fun and lifestyle, and we still have a nice lifestyle and we still have fun, but your, your priority has to be the financial freedom and then fitting your lifestyle in after you've prioritized that. I agree. I agree. And, you know, I mean, my head was so backwards till I figured this out. And like, it's so obvious once you know, and I can't stress enough what you just said. Please focus on your network first above everything else. And you will live a very different life. So true. I actually have a client I'm working with right now, and we're just kind of having these conversations. He really wants to go all in and, you know, big gamble, big risk, put everything into the business. And And this is the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This big risk thing. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's important to invest in your business. You know, business, obviously the rules are different different places, but at least in the States, there are tax benefits to running a business. You can make a lot of money running a business. So I'm pro entrepreneurship, but I don't think it's about the one big gamble. If you have the one big gamble, you can also have the one big loss. It's about, you know, taking out enough money to live on and prioritizing your retirement, your financial future, your financial freedom, little by little building that and then making small bets. Because if there's one thing we know as entrepreneurs, it's that not everything, in fact, I would say most things are probably not going to work out the way you imagine. 
So you need to be making lots of small bets and giving yourself opportunities instead of all in on one thing. And then when it doesn't work out, you go bust. Yeah. And what you were sharing earlier was, you know, um, investing is boring. If you're doing it right, it's boring. You're not letting your emotions get involved. It's a long-term strategy. It's putting that regular income in um, and choosing a, a diverse portfolio. Absolutely. I totally agree. Yeah. Limiting beliefs. Let's go there because I personally right now I'm working on my money mindset. And it's funny because investing's kind of okay to me but me making money seems to be a total money block and both you know as the investment grows i could easily self-sabotage so um i think it's you know the two together are going to make you very strong so i'd love to hear you know about limiting beliefs you must have had your own um how we can sabotage our potential our, yeah. you know, our investment potential. Yeah. I would say one sort of set of limiting beliefs that's really, really common is being negative about rich people. And if on a yeah. subconscious level, you don't, or a conscious level, you don't like rich people, you think that they cheat people, they take from poor people, they're, they've probably done something bad. If you have all of these negative beliefs about people that are successful, then you're only going to allow yourself to get to a certain level financially before, you know, you won't let yourself cross over because you'll say, well, I don't want to become one of those bad people. I'm going to be just successful enough. And so that's a really good area for people to look at. And you can DIY a lot of this journaling is a really great approach. So just get out a notepad and start writing down, you know, rich people are and finish, finish the sentence. And you'll probably be horrified <laughs> about some of what comes out of your mind. And the fact of the matter is there are bad rich people. There are also a lot of bad poor people and bad middle-class people. And there are good people at every step of the way as well. And if you start to look for it, you'll find a lot of successful business people that have done a lot of work for charity. Um, Tom's Shoes comes to mind where every pair of shoes they sell, they donate a pair of shoes as well. So there's a lot of examples of successful people doing well. And you've got to kind of train your brain to focus on that and say, well, there are bad rich people, but I'm not going to be one of them. I'm going to be like these good rich people. And um, you know, starting to change those beliefs really will do a lot to help you from unblocking yourself. Yeah, because I'm sure even when you invest and, you know, your net worth is getting strong and you're getting near your freedom number, I'm sure people do sabotage that if, they're, if they have limiting beliefs around having a, a lot of money. Yeah, absolutely. And it can come, you know, in through the side door. It can be things like, well, I can't grow my business. I can't make more money because I'm already maxed out. Time wise. And this is actually one that I'm working with on myself right now because I do feel like my plate is pretty full. I have the IT consulting business that we're still running kind of as a high, as a side hustle. And then I have my coaching business. So I'm telling myself, you know, I'm maxed out. No way to make any more money. Well, you know, what of these tasks could I outsource? Could I delegate? Could I mm -hmm. hand off? You know, working with a virtual assistant. Um, what of these tasks? do I actually not need to be doing? Is there a way during my work hours to be more focused and more productive? Is there a way to earn more per hour in which I am working? So, you know, a lot of times you'll trip yourself up, like I said, kind of through the side door too, kind of indirectly. So it's just about challenging those beliefs and saying, well, what if I could, you know, instead of telling yourself you can't, well, what if I could, how could I? And this is again, where a coach will really help you because you have somebody from the outside to observe that mindset and help you see where what you think is the truth might just be one way of approaching it. And what about the belief as well? Um, this is a very common one. You know, like myself, I'm, I'm 40 now and I, I knew that I should have been thinking about my financial future <laughs> in my twenties, but I've done nothing about it. Like it, this is such a common thing. And we believe that, um, financial freedom is only for rich people or we won't be able to live our life now because um, we'll have, we're putting it all into this future date. And then by the time I get to, to use it, I'll be too old. You know, they're very common 
uh, beliefs around fin- creating financial freedom? Yeah, and I'll, I'll give you some, some kind of reference material. Um, there's a father-son duo, Dr. Ted Klontz, K-L-O-N-T-Z, and Dr. Brad Klontz, and they've done a lot of work around financial therapy and a lot of analysis around what limiting beliefs people have that trip them up. And this shocked me, the number one belief, and this accounts for 75% of the difference between people who become wealthy and have a high net worth and people who don't. The number one belief is that it's important to save for the future. So yeah, sure, you want to pay off the debt from your past. You want to have a nice life today. But if you ever want to stop working, if you want to have an okay lifestyle when you get to a point where you can't work, if you want to build for the future, if you want to build a net worth, just that belief that it is important to save for the future accounts for 75% of the difference between people that were successful with money and those who weren't. It's fascinating. So what you're saying is the people who think about saving for the future is the 95% or not the 95%? Uh, the ones who believe that saving for the future is important, that accounts for 75% of the difference, that one belief. Yeah. So yeah. you're, I guess, 75%, I, I don't know how to do the math there, but <laughs> it's the most important belief, the belief. And it makes sense, right? If you don't believe it's important to set money aside for the future, then when you get to the future, there won't be any money there. <laughs> yeah, and I remember... I remember, you know, I was doing love coaching before this and uh, I remember um, people who didn't believe in marriage or happy ever after or that was even possible struggled with love. And it's the same kind of with money. If you if you don't believe that you can save the future and you can have um, that your money is uh, working for you and that you can literally give up your job and decide, you know, work if you if you choose to see when you believe that you're more likely to take the steps necessary to to make that your reality yeah makes perfect sense so mindset is a lot of it Mm -hmm. and um and strategy yes no yes people always say it's mindset 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 yeah well mindset is good but if mindset on its own were enough to get the job done then you know think about these monasteries where all these monks are sitting up on top of the mountain meditating all day If it were just about mindset, then every time their mind wandered to like, okay, I'm thinking about God, I'm thinking about being a good person. Ooh, but I really like sports cars. They'd be like, "Um, Bob, you need to come get this Ferrari towed. You just manifested another Ferrari. This is really becoming a problem. We don't have space out here for all the Ferraris you've manifested. So mindset is the, and this is, if you've watched like the movie, The Secret, they sort yeah. of leave out the second half of the secret. The first half is, yes, absolutely. You have to think that it's possible. You have to believe it's possible for you. And then you have to put those beliefs to work and you have to take some action. Now, you don't necessarily have to exhaust yourself and be miserable about it. But occasionally things will just magically happen. You know, you're thinking about a friend and they call or text you. You know, that's law of attraction. That's the secret. But for most things, at least in the state stage where I am of my spiritual development, it requires actually going out and telling some people <laughs> about your business, about what you're trying to do. Just sitting at home and thinking about it is not enough to get the job done. And if, um, there's a, another really great resource. Brooke Castillo is a, um, a life coach, and she her what she calls the model says the circumstance happens. And then we assign meaning to that circumstance. We have a thought about it. So circumstance, thought, and then we have an emotional reaction to the thought. And then based on the thought and the feeling, we go and take action. And that gives us our result. And the result will always match the thought. So if you think, oh, there's no way I can't be financially independent. I'm just going to work until I die. Well, you're going to manifest that result. But if you start to challenge that belief and think, well, maybe it's possible. If other people have done it, then maybe I can do it. Then you start studying about finances and money. You start looking for places where you can kind of trim your budget, but still have a nice lifestyle. And and that's what starts to make the difference. And and kind of going back to that trimming the lifestyle piece, because that's the piece that nobody wants to do. It's kind of the yucky sacrifice piece. But I will say a lot of the happiness 
that we're looking for in spending. That's why people don't want to cut their lifestyle because they think they won't be happy because happiness comes from stuff. This is what the marketers tell mm, us. We've been, that's yeah, true. we've been sold this whole lie of consumerism that, you know, if you have the right car, if you have the right house, if you take the right vacation, and those things can make you happy, but it's this hedonic treadmill of the car makes you really happy until you get the first scratch on it or until you have to make the first payment on it. It's a real short lived kind of happiness. And you're always trying to look for more. So if you can start to kind of see that, you know, my happiness truly really comes from my relationships and spending your money on things that match your values. Maybe you truly do value travel but you don't care about having a big house because you're never there because you like to travel. So spending your money more consciously in a way that matches your values. And then presumably one of your values is financial freedom, financial independence, a comfortable retirement. So you start to reprioritize and adjust your spending to match those values. Love it. Lisa, for anyone listening to this, what's that kind of one aha you want to leave the listeners with? Mm, I, I think it's just that, that statistic that I cited from um, Dr. Klontz's research that 75% of the difference between poor people and people with a higher net worth is the belief that saving for the future is important. So if you can only you mm. know, convince yourself of one thing, if you can, can I don't get it, I don't understand it, I don't think it's going to matter, but I heard on this podcast it's important to save for the future start taking action, start setting money aside. And if you can give yourself, you know, 10 years of really consistent action, I truly believe you can wake up a millionaire. Yeah, no, I do too. Absolutely. And I will totally back that. I, you know, I'm seeing the proof already. Lisa, anyone who wants to get in contact with you, where did it go? If you are on Facebook, I have a free Facebook group that I run and you can just search for, um, Money Club with Lisa Duke, or if you want to take a shortcut, lisaduke.net slash money club. If you are not on Facebook, then you've got free time and you can use it to watch my YouTube channel. And if you just search for Lisa Duke Financial Coaching on YouTube, you should be able to find those videos or they're linked off my the bottom of my homepage, which is just lisaduke.net. Oh, and also if anybody is actually interested, you know, if you just want to start with the free stuff, I encourage that. But if somebody hears this and they really want to take action, then they can book a call to learn about um, more information about how to get started. And that's linked off my homepage as well. Thank you, Lisa. And thank you for being here. This has been fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate your time. And I appreciate your audience. Hi, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, remember to join us in the Private Financial Freedom Podcast Facebook group with me, your host, Lorna Poole. This is a safe haven of like-minded, wealth-getting go-getters who, like you, are on their journey to creating financial freedom in their life. This is where you and I can get intimate. Give, I can give you the support and guidance to go from where you are now to where you want to be, developing your wealth mindset and creating your financial freedom life. Join at www.facebook.com slash groups, the financial freedom podcast. You will see the links to this on the website. It's in the show notes and, or type it into the Facebook group. All you have to type in is financial freedom podcast and you will see us there. Look forward to seeing you in the group. Take care. Thank you for joining us on the financial freedom podcast to creating wealth, investing and developing your money mindset. To get started today on your journey, head on over to www.lornapool.com and grab your free course, Five Steps to Breaking Free from Your Poverty Mindset and Accelerating Your Journey to Financial Freedom. See you there.